In these programmes, we've been exploring some of the reasons why a good and loving God would allow suffering. Last time, we looked at the claim that God can use our suffering to grow us as people, to develop our characters. But how would this work in practice? The Bible says that God's purpose is to make us into the kind of people who will enjoy being with him forever. People like his son, Jesus. But this doesn't just happen, it doesn't work automatically. There's something missing, something vitally important. Our choices matter. We can choose how to respond to the suffering that life throws at us. And how we choose to face the suffering in our own lives matters. We can either turn towards God, trust him and grow, or we can turn away from him and become bitter and self-pitying. What we found, having forgiven this terrorist, that we were then beginning to learn more about forgiveness. And to us, we have to say now, looking back, that it was a healing process. I think had we not forgiven him, we would still be angry, we'd still be frustrated, we'd still want, want him to be severely punished or whatever. Those are the sort of human feelings one could have. But because it was a healing process for us, it's been a help to help other people. And I, let me give you an illustration. It was not too long ago, I was speaking at a men's conference in Northern Ireland and a colleague who had been in the service but now retired came to me afterwards and said, I can't forgive the man who killed my son. I said, well, go on, tell me about it. And he said, well, he was walking down the, one of the streets near the shops where he lived with his wife and two children and was shot through the head. I still see the man who shot him, who hasn't been punished. There must be some arrangement in Northern Ireland for non-conviction. I don't know what that is. But I still see that man with his wife and children walking down the same street. How can I forgive him? And my answer to him was something like this. Well, he's got a conscience to live with and you can't do anything about that. But sadly, if you don't forgive him, you, I think, will be in a worse position than he is because you're, these feelings will just stir up and stir up. But you'll never be able to do anything out of the frustration. But if you forgive, and it might be very difficult for you to do that, but if you forgive him, you'll find that those feelings of anger and frustration and resentment and revenge will all go. And it will be a, an experience which perhaps you can't have at the moment. But that's what we found. So I can only talk about that experience. And numbers of people who've said to me, having read the book, well, we've tried to forgive and we found it helpful. Others have tried to forgive and, and say, well, we can't. We don't, we, we still got the memory of it. But I still know the healing power that's been to us as an Oak family. You can't learn how to forgive someone by reading a book. The only way to learn is by being put in the kind of situation Robin faced where someone has caused you real harm. You can't learn how to be patient or courageous by reading a book either. The only way to learn how to be patient is by being put in situations that involve frustration and delay. The only way to learn how to be courageous is to be put in situations that are full of fear. And of course, this wouldn't work if we knew that God was always going to rescue us from that situation. If I knew that the thing I feared would never happen, I wouldn't have any reason to be afraid, and there wouldn't be any opportunity to show courage. So if God wants us to learn to be courageous, he has to let us be in situations that are full of fear. And sometimes the outcomes of those situations must be bad for us. That's why our choices matter. How we respond to suffering matters. We began these programmes by hearing the stories of people who've been through some kind of suffering or tragedy in their lives. Then we explored some of the reasons why a good and loving God may allow suffering. In the next few programmes, we'll ask our contributors about how they've responded to the suffering in their lives. For example, has it made them doubt that God is there? <laughs>